Greetings friends, it's Victor here and welcome back to another video. Next week, I have my court appointment to legally change my name and gender. So let's talk about that for a hot sec and why I'm doing that and why now. But before we get into the video, please do click the like button and the subscribe button. I'd appreciate it very much. Thank you. I know and know of a lot, a lot of trans and non-binary people who legal name and gender change are like one of the first things that they do, like before they like do any kind of medical transition, et cetera, et cetera, if they are choosing to do any kind of medical transition. Um, and like that is totally like within their right and they should do that if that's what's comfy for them and not everyone medically transitions and that is a-okay. But I personally did not do that. And so I just want to talk about why for a little bit just because I think the order that I have chosen to do things in has been very like non-standard or unconventional compared to what I know of a lot of other people doing. Um, and so yeah, I just want to unpack that a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of start with like where I started transitioning and kind of what that has looked like. Um, and I think that will sort of help to kind of explain like this delay in changing my name and gender marker. I started with social transition, so that was changing name and pronouns, um, and just having people call me those things. Um, and I was socially transitioned for a very, very long time before I did any kind of medical transition, um, like years. However, I did know that I for sure, for sure, for sure, 100% wanted top surgery. And so when I became uh, financially able and emotionally ready to do that, that is what I did. And for me, that was like, there were no questions around like getting top surgery. Honestly, even if I was like cis, I probably would have still gotten top surgery just cause like it bothered me like that much. But also cis people aren't usually bothered by things like that. So I may, maybe not, forget, forget that. <laughs> Starting with the social transition was easy because that is something that is very easily undone, right? So like what people are calling you and referring to you as that can change over time and it's free um, Aside from maybe like a social toll, right? Um, but uh, for the most part, it's like it's free. It doesn't cost you anything You've not like permanently like altered anything about your life your body like yourself, right? Um, and so that was an easy place to start Top surgery, I for sure, for sure knew I wanted, but because it was permanent or like more permanent and more difficult to undo than um, the social transition, I kind of waited to do that. And part of it was also the finances. Now, my thought process through all of this was, I do not want to change my name or gender marker in a way that would put me in danger if I were traveling or around strangers or around homophobic, transphobic people or in a place where I did not have advocates um, who would be able to like support me and defend me if I was ever actually in a situation um, where I was actually in danger. And so because of that, I did not want to change my gender marker from female to male or change my name from a feminine name to a masculine name prior to passing more or less uh, to being readily accepted on first glance as the gender that my documents would suggest. Did that cause problems in some ways? Certainly. Uh, it has not been fun to have my dead name be on like all of my legal documents and like literally everywhere. That is a pretty difficult thing to handle like from a psychological standpoint, but also from a pr practical standpoint with all of the people who know me and only know me as Victor. So let's fast forward a little bit. When I decided to go on low-dose testosterone, um, this is like a uh, not necessarily permanent lifelong choice commitment, what have you. Um, this is still kind of a, I'm feeling it out. I'm taking it one day at a time. So far, I'm really loving everything about being on testosterone but maybe I'll stop taking it at some point, but maybe I won't, maybe I'll be on it forever. In any case, one of the effects of testosterone is lowering the voice, um, and that tends to be a permanent effect. So you can't really undo that even if I were to stop taking it. And to be honest, I think that the voice was the one big thing that was really holding me back from like passing, if you will, like before testosterone with my 
pre-T voice, I would pass in some circumstances and not pass in other circumstances. And a lot of that had to do with uh, the age people assumed that I was. Like when I was in a context where it was appropriate and made sense for me to be much younger, um, I passed very easily there. But when I was in context where uh, it didn't really make sense at all for me to be like a teenager, um, I that's where I started having problems a little bit. T definitely kind of changed how I'm able to pass in different circumstances. Because of that, lately, over the course of the past mm, four or five months-ish, really since since about a month or two on T, I tend to pass very readily as male. And so because of that, um, I feel like it is now more of a liability to not change my name and gender marker, um, where it says female and a feminized dead name. Um, I feel as though it is much safer now at this point to change those things to align with what people expect me to be, such that, again, I don't run into any problems or put myself in any danger if I were to travel or be in a foreign country or be around um, people that would not take kindly to uh, trans people. Now, part of my hesitation with going through this whole process is also that in my young adult life, I moved away from my home state and uh, to a different state uh, for a job, and the state that I am currently residing in is a very conservative state, and so, uh, honestly, the whole process of, like, going to court, and I'll be representing myself, um, in a conservative political environment is a little bit scary, I guess. I know it's probably going to be fine, um, and my court hearing is, like, virtual, um, which is really nice, so that'll hopefully take some of the scariness out of it, um, but it's also just, like, I don't know, it's a scary thing, and I've never, like, done that sort of thing before. Uh, and so that was part of it too, is just the psychological aspect of like, oh, this is a new thing that I haven't done. Another part of it is, honestly, I probably, if I had the option, would go with an X gender marker, but I, that's still very much like, I, I, I would waffle um, if that were an option in terms of like international travel. Um, like, I know that's pretty commonly accepted like in Europe, but other places maybe not as much so. But anyhow, that's not an option for me. And so, Part of uh, the angst over this was, well, do I wait until X is a gender marker option or do I just go with male? Um, and so at this point, uh, this has caused me like enough grief and hassle dealing with people at the bank, dealing with like when I move and set up new utilities and I'll be like on the phone being like, hey, can you set up my utilities? They're like, are we talking to enter dead name here? Um, and they'll check like four times because like they've heard my voice and they're like, what? Uh, so anyhow, um, that's kind of how all that has gone and why I feel as though now is an appropriate time to be changing that gender marker and that legal name um, so that it can kind of match up with what people expect of me because honestly, if I wanted to go by something more gender neutral, um, like my legal documents don't really have any bearing on that. Uh, I really just want to be like safe as I navigate my like official life, if that makes any sense. So whenever I'm traveling or doing like any kind of official legal business, uh, like for example, buying a house or like opening a bank account, I don't wanna be like hassled like in those types of situations. All right, so that was a little bit long and rambly, but hopefully kind of helps to unpack kind of like how in my head it made sense to do things in this order. And I realize that's not the order that a lot of people do it in because a lot of people, like the name and gender marker are the most accessible and easily changed things. And so that's what people are uh, gonna go ahead and do. And that's awesome. If that's you, then like, and that's something that's going to be supportive and affirming to you, then that's awesome. You should do that. All right, well, that is all I have for you today. Uh, if you like the video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and I will see you all next time.